flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and I am way behind on my editing. I still have a video that I haven't edited yet about um, planting my eucalyptus seeds, but I wanted to hop on here quick because a lot of people are asking me what I got for my birthday and I wanted to do part two of that Q&A that I did last week. I just haven't gotten around to it. So I did a community video, which I you'll see in the eucalyptus um, video. I'm gonna add it on the end. So I did like a community Christmas card for my hometown and it was so special and just the spirits were uplifting. Anyway, you guys will see that in my other video, but that's been taking um, much of my time this week. It was a volunteer project that I did with my hometown to help our local businesses spread Christmas cheer. So that's done, and I now will tell you about my birthday. So my birthday was this week, and I usually don't make a big deal out of my birthday. I like to try to take the day off from work and just do whatever I want, but there's really nothing to do other than read, like research online and actually like work anyway. So I went to work, it was nothing special. I came home and made dinner because I wanted a specific meal that only I know how to make, which is a Mexican skillet. Oh, I'll put the recipe down below. It's delicious. So anyway, on event fill, I, I stopped into my mother's driveway and she um, gave me a couple of gifts. <sighs> Actually, I'm wearing one. <laughs> okay, so she gave me two t-shirts. She loves to get me t-shirts with like funny sayings on them or just cute t-shirts. So she got me this, <sighs> this t-shirt, it just says, be kind and you'll be seeing me wear this this summer she also got me another one hold on okay this one says i just want to work in my garden and hang out with my chickens i think my mom knows me just a little bit she also got me a book like a nature book and she knows that i love that so i got home from work and brad pitt had some gifts on the table from him and the kids and i was able to um, open those up, which was always, it's always exciting to get gifts. Brad got me new bogs. He got me new bogs. My other bogs were about four years old. They were cracked through here, cracked through here because I wear them every day. Check out how cool these are. They're the 4-H edition. There's already chicken poo on the bottom, so I'm not going to show you that. And what else did Brad get me? Oh yeah. This gorgeous, it's got flowers all the way down. And so when I was younger, I was obsessed with Adidas. I was the girl who was sporty spice, sporty spice in school. I was always wearing the Adidas from head to toe, matching sneakers, sporty spice. I played three sports all throughout, you know, and through college and stuff like that. So anyway, sporty spice, he got me a wonderful flowery Adidas hoodie. These are things that I'm gonna use all the time all the time. It's like for Mother's Day, Brad got me the knee pads that I wear when I'm working in the garden. They're just practical gifts for someone who's gardening or flower farming or just likes to be outside. Amazing. My in-laws, same thing. What's that? Oh, yeah. It's a new Carhartt vest. It's a Carhartt vest. It's a Carhartt vest. So Carhartt vests are amazing. They're lined. They keep me warm. I hate being cold. And they got me an extra, a big one, like it's a men's medium. Um, and it's huge. So I've been eyeing a vest like this for a while and I don't like to spend money on myself unless it's flowers. So <laughs> this is really nice of them to get me this. They also got me one more thing. <laughs> it's another Carhartt sweatshirt. Where's my, where's the heart of car? Oh, it's on the pocket. It's another Carhartt. So I grew up with Carhartts and let me explain. My father wears Carhartt head to toe. Like, the pants, the jacket, the sweatshirts, the hat, all that stuff. He's an electrician and he works 12 months out of the year and we are zone 4B. So it gets pretty cold up here. So I always, like Carhartt's been a staple product in my household since I was a wee tot. So I always know the brand. My dad has had the same jacket for like 10 plus years, the same hat, the same pants. He just loves the product and so do I. So I was super excited that my in-laws got me these beneficial items they know that i love my hoodies and look at i wish you could feel your vision feel it it's like a lamb so soft i know what you're thinking she's so spoiled it doesn't end there i'm so <laughs> i feel spoiled i really do but i'm blessed to have people in my life that love me the which which brings me to the gift from my father and my stepmother shall we go see it there she is, 
Isn't she glorious? So my father got me a weather system. So this has um, a piece of weather equipment outside. I'm watching it right now, it's so cool. It calculates temperature, feel like temperature, direction of the wind, the speed of the wind. Like today we had an 11 mile an hour peak wind. It says it right there, that was the highest wind gust that we had. Right now the wind's blowing at five miles per hour and it will tell you one day since we had rain, the heat index, it actually has a prediction too of your weather and this is so hyper localized to exactly where I live. It's getting dark outside, it's evening time and uh, this is where I have my coffee every morning in this seat. So I'll be sitting right here checking it out and uh, Brad hooked it up immediately. I am, oh, how dark I am. I ran outside real quick, <laughs> you saw what the temperature is. This is where the weather station thing is. Okay, so Brad put it up there and this is, see how it's spinning? Whee! So that's calculating the wind speed. The wind direction is this little, it's almost like a spatula underneath. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. And these are nothing new. Look, that's the spatula that's um, gauging what direction the wind is coming from. And if you go up a little bit, those are the little cuppies that are uh, calculating the wind speed. Now, I'm slightly obsessed with this already. So my dad has one of these too. And uh, <laughs> so we've been texting each other two days already. His birthday was yesterday, which is funny. But um, so <laughs> we've been texting each other. I got 11. What'd you get? He's like, I got eight. So he lives in a wooded area. So my winds are always gonna be um, higher than his. He only lives about three quarters of a mile down the road, but it's in a totally different climate. So I'm excited to see what my actual wind gusts are because I know that they're always different than what the weatherman says, you know, because they're just doing a broad area. This is a microclimate. Everyone has a microclimate. So this is gonna be a super helpful tool for me when it comes to farming. Back inside, nice and warm. Okay, so if anybody's interested, there are a lot of different weather stations that are available that are on the market, and this is not a sponsored video. I have no sponsors. This one is called Accurite, and I will um, put that in the description below. So, Accurite, they're fairly inexpensive. You can get anywhere ranging from like $99 all the way up to three, $400, depending on what you want. There's Wi-Fi capable ones. You can get the information straight from the unit, the weather station itself, to your phone. So really, you know, depends on what you want. I didn't have a need for a Wi-Fi one here because I don't have Wi-Fi. Anyway, okay, so I think that about wraps up my birthday um, things. I, oh, what did we do? Yeah, so we watched the Rockefeller tree lighting ceremony. So that's what I did. I watched the, the tree lighting ceremony. Gina and I, my flower friend Gina, we're uh, texting back and forth. We're commenting on Gwen Stefani's picnic table that she was wearing, the picnic tablecloth. Oh, and how about that bow that Megan Trainer was wearing? I'm not gonna put a picture of it because I don't know about copyright infringement laws and all that stuff, but oh my God, Gina and I were, we were the fashion police, we've decided. We're the fashion police in, in my hoodies and my, my leggings, fashion police. So now on to the questions. I know that there were a few questions that I did not answer from the Q&A the other day, so let me bring them up. So I'm probably gonna forget which ones I have answered and which ones <laughs> I haven't because I, I talk so much. I answered that one. Barbara asks if I'm going to be growing ranunculus this year and if so, when am I going to start my corms? Barbara, I have an answer for you. Yes, I'm growing ranunculus this year. Probably far too many of them, but I'm gonna go give it a try. My corms look great. I actually have about 1,200 of them. <laughs> what was I thinking? It's okay, we're handling this. We'll handle it together, Barbara. I'm gonna pre-sprout pre my corms between the last week in February and the first week in March. Let's, let's try that. Mondo asks, if it rains, how do I handle harvest and how do I handle those blooms? So, fortunately, um, we didn't have any rain. <laughs> Not really, fortunately, but we had a severe drought this season, so I didn't really have to handle that. But I have been told some tips on how to handle that. And I would like to harvest, if it's raining, harvest in the evening and then let those flowers dry out for overnight before I needed them the next day. And that's what I want to do. So Emily is asking for some foolproof fillers and some other greenery for bouquets. I just posted 
all about my fillers in another video, but I can tell you that some of my favorite fillers are basil and then like gomfrina and amaranth. Those are my favorite fillers. Oh, so I think I answered this question, but I'm gonna go over it one more time. Elizabeth asked if um, any of my dahlias had gall on them when I dug them up. Yes, almost 50% of them. And I basically just abandoned my dahlia crop. I do have a couple of varieties that I saved. I probably have a hundred tubers that I was able to store um, for the winter, but I'm basically starting fresh next year. And I'm actually gonna be trying a lot more dahlias from seeds than uh, tubers this year and see how my luck goes with that because I really had horrible luck with disease on my tubers this year. Gardening Junkie asks how I do not kill my plants when I'm weeding. Well, I can't say that I haven't, but I like to stay on top of the weeds so that the roots of the weed are not entangled in with the roots of my actually actual seedlings. Sometimes if I don't have enough time to weed the whole entire bed, I will just weed like a four inch circle around my seedling so that none of those roots are able to get in there. So that's what I do. JJBHJJBH asks, what are the most intensive months of flower farming? Is it spring or fall? I gotta be honest with you, I don't think it's spring or fall. I would say that my most like intense maximum output are like July, August, and September when I'm harvesting. Harvesting takes so long. You know, you're, when you're planting, there's not, there's a rush to do things, but there's not a rush to do things. But when you're harvesting, you gotta do it. Like those flowers need to be cut and they need to be cut now. Those are my, I think, maximum, you know, I, I, I will say that there are weeks in the spring that I have 14 hour days in the field. There are days like that. Um, but the harvest days are more high pressure, I would say. Rebecca says she's considering a U-pick. She said, is that something I've looked into? I had originally thought that a U-pick was, was a great idea, but I've seen so many people have negative experiences with it. And some people are great and successful and don't have any issues, but I've also seen people where they had just rude customers on their property. They were trespassing off hours, um, people bringing like, cameras, setting up and just doing whatever they want, like during non, open hours. I've seen places where people brought their pets and their pets trampled the flower fields. And you know, I don't want that confrontation. Excuse me, could you get your dog out of my flower bed? I'm just, there's so many issues with liability about that. It's just not the way I am trending. I'm really liking the bouquet bar idea. That way people are still coming and having the experience, but they're not walking around my flower fields with sharp weapons. Rebecca also asked that she noticed that it looked like I mulched over some of my black plastic. Yes, yes I did. I, I mulched over some of my peony plastic and I, I plan on doing the rest as well. I use wood chips and that's stuff that I get for free at my local transfer station. So Old Reading Farm asked about the breakdown of profit, whether it was florists or CSA or bouquet bar that brought in the most money. I would say initially the CSA brings in the bulk of the money right away because you're selling everything up front. Like for example, I sold 20 shares um, last week and at $100 a piece, so that's $2,000 all in one day, but it, you know, the work is spread out over the course of the next season. I would say the bouquet bars cumulatively made more money than the CSA. And they, those were both more than I made from the florist last year, but that's not typical. If you live close to a large florist who's making large florist orders, you could you could make more money selling to a florist than you do at both a bouquet bar and a CSA. It just depends on your market. Three Lilies Flower Farm is asking about photographers and allowing photographers on the property and how do I go about that? So this past year, I did have some inquiries uh, from local photographers who wanted to come and take pictures on the farm. My first question to them, because I'm not set up that way, is do you carry your own insurance? So if that's basically how I have to ask it because I don't carry insurance for some professional photographer to come on my property to take pictures. If I had that liability coverage, then I could, but I don't. So I had to ask if they carry their own insurance. And they did, because that's a normal thing to ask. The photographer said to me, I have to carry my own insurance for all of the places that I take pictures. She takes pictures at, at local apple orchards, at Christmas tree farms, and that's normal. It's normal to ask a photographer to carry their own insurance. So that's what I did. Um, and they actually offered me, um, the dollar amount they offered me, they wanted to use my field for two hours a night for six days in a row, and they were gonna pay me $100 a night. So it's $50 an hour. Fleur 933 
also known as Lily, is asking me, um, what am I doing with the bounty from my garden? I have no more tomato sandwiches, clearly. But um, I did freeze some stuff. I did freeze some tomatoes. I actually, today, this morning, I made a quiche with a shredded potato crust. And inside the quiche, I put some zucchini and squash that I had frozen from the garden this year. And I just diced it up and froze it in chunks. I tray froze it so that they weren't all stuck together. Um, so yeah, I used some zucchini and a quiche this morning. I do have some tomatoes in the freezer. I'm gonna make a big pot of sauce sometime. Hopefully, maybe January, I don't know. So busy. RT Smith says that they didn't see much on amending the soil on a larger scale. Do I add to the soil as I go or amend in a larger amount? So for the past couple of years, I have had two giant truckloads of local manure, composted manure, dropped off here on the farm. And then like, I mean, big two dump truck loads and um, it's aged compost. And Brad tilled that in with the tractor all around everywhere. I plan on getting a soil test this fall. It just didn't happen. And so I'll have to do that in the spring. I might actually be able to do it. It's gonna be 45 this weekend, so. So what I plan on doing in the spring is bringing in more of that green compost, which it's, I'm using a different supplier this next year. I was getting some green compost and topping off the beds with just a couple of inches of, of fresh green compost. And I'll have that tested too, just to see and make sure it's not lacking in any nutrients. Ms. PG is asking uh, or saying that when I grew lilies this past year, I cut them uh, long and I didn't leave enough on the stem. Did she, th does, do I think that those are gonna grow back and bloom? Probably not, probably not. And I didn't really cut them that long. I cut them pretty normal length for lilies. The plants themselves just didn't get tall. They should, should, should have gotten four or five feet tall and they didn't. They were only 18 to 24 inches off the ground. So in order to get a usable stem, I needed to cut them to the ground. So. I honestly, you're supposed to leave about eight inches on the stem in order for a lily to effectively re-energize the bulb and throw up another beautiful bloom the next year. I did not do that for the majority of them. So I do not expect there to be a successful lily harvest on those same bulbs this year. Bummer. Meadows Sailor says, I love all your videos. You are hilarious and very inspiring. Thank you. I'm trying to figure out how, if I could be a flower farmer with limited space. She has just under a half acre on a city. Yes. Half acre is actually a huge um, flower farming area. Yeah, huge. She's asking about spacing too. And really you, you can put plants. I basically spaced everything between four and six inches apart. Not perennials, but the annuals, like my snapdragons and my lysianthus, four to six inches apart. It makes them grow straighter and taller because they're trying to reach the light. So you can fit so much on less than a half acre. You can fit so much on a quarter acre. Don't underestimate the amount of blooms that you can get from a small space. That's about it for today's video. I just wanted to share with you guys what my family got me for my birthday. I was so excited and so appreciative of all the very thoughtful gifts, clearly, all of them hit the nail on the head. Perfect stuff for me. Um, I'm so excited about that weather center. I know it's gonna be so helpful in my microclimate here on the top of this hill with the wind and the wind chill. And there's certain areas of my property that are a few degrees different. So that's good to know. Like the basil, like the super cold sensitive stuff, I won't put over there on the top of the hill because that's gonna have frost damage faster than if I put it over here on the side of the hill because it's got a little bit more protection. Anyway, all these little things that you learn about your property, keep track of that because that's gonna help you for years to come. I also wanna say thank you so much for all the birthday wishes. I was overwhelmed with birthday wishes from around the world. The next video that will come your way is the eucalyptus seed starting video, which is like a compilation of a bunch of things. And it, you know, it's not really a how to, it's just like how I do. So hopefully it'll show you guys, and I've done one before, but it's just, I'm just showing everything that I do on the farm so you guys know on a day-to-day -day basis what's going on at Flower Hill Farm. See you guys soon.